Hey, shit, I can invite you and you just you can join just like that, eh? That's yeah, sick. does this work? That's yeah, that's sick. Yeah, light on, light off. Yo, put the light on. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, I see. Yeah, Rosie's Rosie's in here. Yo, Rosie, if you if you hear the sounds messed up at all, just let us know. We're gonna we're gonna wait a minute here as people start rolling in. Um, and we get the shit popping. This is gonna be a fun one. Yeah, how do I sound? Pretty good. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little it's a little quiet. Just um, have your have the voice volume up a little bit um, when you speak, and then um, we're, we're, yeah, we're gonna get it popping. You have your shit plugged in, right? <laughs> Phone charger's on. Battery's good. Battery's good. All right, cool, perfect. Yeah, we're just gonna That's let people roll in here. Jacob was popping. Yo, our dog from the group. We got Jimmy Real Estate in the house was popping. Elizabeth was popping. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, any questions that you guys have as this thing pops off, save them or drop them in the chat. We're going to answer them as we go. Um, we're also going to have a, a little period of time to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a little moment of Q&A at the end. Um, assuming we get enough people... Can't hear you. Turn, turn the volume on. Make sure the volume's on on your, uh, on your side. If there's any issues, if you guys notice anything, any problems with the live, make sure that you let us know in the chat. Um, we're going to keep keeping track of the chat so that we can get this thing popping right. And, um, yeah, we're just going to keep letting more people say what up. Let us know where you're from. I think Jacob's from the UK. Elizabeth, what's popping, what's popping, what's popping? Drop them in the chat. Y'all sound good. Thanks, baby. <laughs> How do we look, though? <laughs> fire, 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 fire. Looking good. We we sound good, but how do we look? Yeah, good as always. <laughs> Fly. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna get this thing popping. Let it roll, let it roll. Jacob, I'm waiting for that voice from that voice note from you. You better send that over. I need that. <laughs> I need that breakdown. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to steal Jacob. Indoctrinate him into the team, Marcos. Francine, what's popping? Wally the robot, what's popping? Marcos, my guy. Wally the robot. Wally. Yo. <laughs> That's my boy. Yo, this is sick. Big J, yo, my dog, what's popping? I'm just going to keep this thing rolling. Make sure we got the community in here. Make sure everyone's in here. Marcos, yes, I'm glad that you're here. You're going to love this one. It's going to be super powerful. Dylan is a master at what he does. Unbelievable. Just had a killer role in the last couple. Uh, I mean, just 90 days, you guys fucking smashed it. Um, I can't wait to hear, uh, hear more how it's been going for you um, in detail. And uh, as soon as we get a couple more people, we're going to wait two more minutes, and then we're going to get straight into it. Um, we're going to cover all the details, how you did what you did, um, debunking, the inf debunking the negative perspectives on influence. How does a successful game look? Uh, getting into the mind of your customers, anyone really, and yourself mastering your mental state so that you know how to actually run the game of influence properly, how to handle objections, and what we do to help people overcome all of that. Rasmus, what's going on, brother? I see you just followed me, so shout out to you, bro. This is going to be a lot of fun. I got another minute. We're going to let this thing roll on, and then we're going to jump straight into it. Boom, boom. Esquiaz was popping. Boom, boom, boom. Keep this shit rolling. Dylan is a beast. Absolutely. This guy's been fucking killing it. Like nobody's business. This this game comes natural to him. So I can't wait to, to have him speak on, on what's been going on and share with you guys the, the skills, the value, the perspective, the philosophy, all of it. It's um it's crazy stuff, crazy stuff. We're going to wait for one more minute, get the shit popping, and then we go straight into it. Everyone here, if you got a notepad, if you got a notepad, have a notepad. There's going to be bangers. Have your phone out, whatever you need to do to keep track of, uh, of these keys, because we're going to be dropping gold all through the conversation. So we're at 25, five minutes in, so the rollouts, that's it. Anyone who wants to come in, they'll they'll have to check it on the replay. So, Dylan, my dude, what up? To have you. It's been uh, it's been fantastic working side by side with you in the communities and and seeing everything that's been happening for you guys over the last ninety days. 
Um, why don't you tell, tell the people here who don't know you, uh, who you are, a little bit about what you do, uh, where you're from, and what you are going to bring to the table here for this conversation, please, and thank you. Let them know. Yes, sir. What's up, guys? Uh, I know I see a couple of our clients on here, which is cool. Yeah, you're gonna, need um, to speak up. you're gonna need to speak up a little bit just because it's muffled on the headphone. Is it muffled? Yeah. So just, about, just speak, just speak up a bit and it's gonna be good. Yeah. Okay. Word. Cool. So what's up, guys? So I'm Dylan uh, Gelati. Um, basically, I've been in the, geez, how long has it been? Sales and marketing game for a good three, all for that, four and a half years now. Uh, we've worked with. Before this, worked with everything from medical, worked with influencers, including uh, guys like Elliot Hulse. Um, you know, we've basically done everything from, uh, I've, I've moved from copywriting to sales to marketing to influence. Now we're in the mindset game. Uh, I've done, you know, we, we've launched a, a course called Messaging Mastery in the past when was it? Uh, a year ago. So not even a year ago. And basically, we've helped over close to about 150 entrepreneurs with their messaging and their outreach and, you know, helped everywhere from uh, just people starting out um, to just getting to six figure businesses plus and then all the way up to like seven and eight figure earners and their appointment setting teams, um, moving you know, getting from like the salesiness and like the whole like outreach with like the long body text where basically, you know, the resistance is super high and, uh, you know, got it to a place where people are booking just full calendars and, you know, building brands and, uh, you know, it, it's been a hell of a journey. So from there, I've decided. Yo, Dylan, um, Dylan, I hate, I hate yo. to cut you off before you get into it because I, I want to hear the, I want to hear the gold. Can you just actually pop the headphones out? I think that. Um, they're, they're not good, are they? Yeah, I think they're muffling out. <laughs> Let us know when they're good. Do, do a quick sound check. Yo, how's that sound? Yeah, that's much better. The, the reverb is crazy. We'll find a way to get around it next time, but that, that's going to do for right now. Hey, yo, <laughs> Jacob Wardy wants messaging mastery. That's fire. So yeah, yeah, so <laughs> you're helping entrepreneurs, you're helping entrepreneurs, you're helping people master their out their their communication, how to how to get in touch with people and really get on the same level as people. And um, you guys have had tremendous success. And, um, and so now I, I if I, 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 I know your story a little bit. So I'll kind of just leave the leave the conversation. I know you made a big transition out of that world into what you're doing now. Um, tell me a little bit about what happened there and why you made that change. Yeah, good question. Uh, by the way, can you hear me okay? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, okay, good better. question. Because um, so really where I struggled with helping the people that I helped, we were helping with th – there's so much of a mindset and a, and a soft skill, right, when it comes to sales, when it comes to the messaging, when it comes to writing, when it comes to influence, that I could go in there and like, I could tell everybody the techniques, what to do, what to say, how to say it. And uh, there was still like, you know, a bunch of our clients got tons of results, but there was still like this disconnect where I really, I didn't feel like I was really serving them. Like, I didn't feel like, cause, cause I felt like, cause there was these mental blocks. There was something where people couldn't get outside of themselves and get into somebody else's universe. And I said, you know, I had, I had this conversation with myself where I really had to like, realize like, what is it that like the world really needs? Because a lot of times people, they get into sales, they get into this marketing industry, they get into business and they cannot communicate their value, right? Or they do it to, they, they know they have value and they wanna help people. Um, and they want to, like, they wanna make the sales, but they're missing this like key component, right? They're missing like the, the affinity, the energy, right? And I said, okay, well, I can't fix that with the, the messaging course and with the sales stuff, like with the scripting and the copy, what really had to happen is I had to get down to the root, right? We got to get down to the root of the problem, the core of the problem, which is the mind. And, um, and I said, all right, well, if I'm going to make an impact as big as I plan on making, I got to get down and dirty and I got to help people with the most important thing that you could possibly help people with. And that is their mind. <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> I, I love that you took it there because, I mean, I talk about this shit a lot and I feel like people think I'm crazy, but the reality is, and um, I mean, I had a similar experience. I, I can maybe talk about it later, but I had so much of what we do in our life is affected first by how we feel and what we perceive about ourselves and the world around us. And it doesn't, and it's not just from a position of what we're trying to sell or, or how we are trying to sell, but it's like, it's, it's us and others. So by default, there's first our state, our perspectives, our awarenesses, our feelings, our judgments, all of our crap on top of an interaction with another individual has their own set of exactly the same things that makes having a conversation or having a sale or running a business difficult because now you're, you're just clashing and both of those sides of, of those, both of those, those states are, are colliding and the communication doesn't happen because it's not, it's not two people communicating. It's two, like <laughs> two mental, me mental messes. Yeah. The, the, the mind, I, I, I don't want to go too much of the esoteric cause you might lose some people, <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully we can share enough content here uh, to, to give people the awareness to understand how this, this, uh, this game really works. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, I had the same experience. And so, so now that you, you, you realize that something was missing, you started this game to serve people and move them in the direction of success, right? Making more money, doing more of what they want to be doing, living life on their terms through messaging. But that wasn't really what it was about, was it? There was something more to it, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And so what happened when you made that decision to, to shift from just serving in the, in the soft skill or the teaching of the technicals now into the mindset work? What, what, what has happened for you since then? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, so yeah, the, we were, what, what was happening was the market decides, right? The market was really moving my, my, my work and, and it's kind of like if somebody like the market came up to one of your pieces and just started painting over it. Right, and they're like, it needs to look like this, and you're just I like, I kill them, but yeah, you I freak mean, they, out. They could try, <laughs> yeah. but and so they weren't really getting it. They weren't grasping the concept of what I was trying to do. So, mm. um, so and and then they're like, yeah, what's the script? What's the next thing to say? What like I need the help with this, and I'm like, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to force feed them like this this material, and it wasn't connecting. So John reached out to me. So John, if nobody knows, uh. uh how, can we tag people in this or how do we do that? Um, I'll, I'll see. I think I could tag. I, okay. I'll tag in the, so the just, I think it's just so yeah. me and, uh, me and Seb are in the same program. We were in the same program, Bulletproof Entrepreneur. And this is, uh, this is a guy who helps entrepreneurs with their, uh, I think it's a uh, Bulletproof John on his. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we, so he helps with people with their mindsets. Right. And I, and it, and when he helped me, when John helped me, like I was so like in my own way, I was, my mind was so messy. Like it was anxiety and depression and I'd have these mood swings. And, and I was, and I realized I'm like, yo, I'm, I know what to say. I know sales. I know messaging. I know what to do. And I started getting to a point where like I would be on a call and I'm clamming up and I can't like talk. And I'm like, I can't, there's like this energy, there's this missing component. And after we, I went through the work that me and Seb went through, which is this mind clearing work. Um, I completely changed and my creativity went up. My focus went up. My ability to communicate went up my pro vocal projection and like the way that I like give energy. Right. And what happened was like, all of that built up potential that I felt I had, it, it came out. So then right then and there, I had the idea. I was just like, I know what to do. I just knew what to do. It was all within me. I started this course called Messaging Mastery. I launched it. And um, I think I did about $40,000 in sales on a low ticket front end offer. Uh, just completely with, with organic copywriting. And that, that, was after, that was after you joined Bulletproof, not before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, so Mastering Mastery came out, out as a result of it. Okay, cool. As a result. I, didn't, I didn't know that. And then a so, lot of John's help. Right. And then, yeah. then I was, you know, doing that. I was kicking along and I was also doing consulting still. And then I, um, John reached out to me and he said, Hey dude, like, you know, he saw the results that I was getting for people. He's, he's like, Hey, we, we got to work something out. Let's, um, let's team up. Right. And, um, since then I just, I, you know, it was a big decision. 
it's a, a huge decision because I'm not going to like just half-ass something, right? And also like, I mean, you know, here I am, like I'm, I'm my own kind of business owner and I'm doing this thing and then I'm like, well, I have the opportunity to scale like an amazing company, something that's going to change lives at a, at a level that I can't change lives at and it's doing something that I want to do. So I just went all in with, with John, kind of um, got rid of the business. I still sell messaging mastery privately, like if somebody requests it, but uh, I just went all in with John and I just put my head down and just started working. And um, yeah, I've ran into a ton of hiccups because it's like an offer I'm not used to selling. Um, ramped up pretty quick and I closed about a quarter million dollars in the past, what, 80 to 90 days. So. <laughs> Bro. I mean, I hope you guys who are watching here um, are uh, are congratulating and even just being as excited as I am to hear something like that from from Dylan. Because, man, like, first of all, fucking congratulations um, on on both committing all the way onto something that you felt was a, a a true calling, something that you really believed in, and and also having the wherewithal to decide to move towards something that um, was someone else's project. You, you decided that um, that was the right vehicle to accomplish your goal and you just assumed the responsibility and, and let go of the thing that you were working on to, to move into this space and the success that you, you've you achieved as a result of it speaks for itself. Um, there was one thing that you mentioned that um, I took down as a note, which was really important and, and I believe was, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, from my perspective, when it comes to teaching and to sharing or influencing or selling or transacting or, or convincing or whatever it is that you're trying to do with anybody in the world, that energy that you were talking about, that feeling that came up, even though you knew exactly what to do, it was an interstate thing. It was a sensation that you experienced as you started moving towards something that you idealized or intended. And then it felt uncomfortable. And then all of these symptoms came up as a result of it. Anxiety, fear, depression, guilt, shame, uh, self-doubt, anger, frustration, whatever it is. The, the whole um, flurry of emotional reactions, which for those of you guys who are listening, are all symptoms and feedbacks of the mind and are not actually your true internal state. They are experiences that happen as a result of moving through um, the world and, and, and confronting things that we haven't yet um, maybe I could say acclimated to, but that happens on two sides. It happens for us as we grow, but it also happens for the people that we're, we're uh, communicating with, right? So let's say even if we're in a, in a state where we're clear, we're sharp, we are doing our thing and we make an offer to somebody and that triggers that feeling for them. That is the moment of, uh, of, of practice where this skill set and this, um, ability of influence comes into play where you have to know exactly what it is that that person is going through by having gone through it yourself, really, and then guiding them through that sensation, which very often could be fucking uncomfortable and, and sometimes brings up some scary shit because all of it is, it, it's, it comes from things from our past, things that went wrong, things that we've seen happen wrong for others, things that we want and we don't know how to get all of these, all this crazy shit. Um, and so that energy that you you mentioned that came up in yourself that you've now learned how to handle um and and i've learned as, as well and has, has been a huge uh factor and um and uh, i mean practice i do it every, almost every single day working on this um to allow me to even get to this point um now that you've learned about this and you've you've gone through the process yourself and you've started to see and observe it in other people how do you go about getting into the mind of another person and 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 moving through what you've called the psychic phenomenon of communication uh, whether it's in sales relationships um even just with yourself how how do you navigate and move through that now with this skill set yeah so one the first most important thing in any sales scenario or any scenario where you're you're intending to move somebody from point A to point B is full fucking intention to make that happen at the best of your ability. So if you have that full intention before the call, before the day even starts, like my intention is to make a, you know, do a killer Instagram live with Sebastian crush it. That's my intention. Okay. Well, let's say I hit it and I, or I don't hit it. 
regardless, the intention is there. So, so what happens is people come to call. So like I talk to people all the time and from training hundreds of people, they're going on to calls with their intention not to get rejected or an intention mm. to look cool or an intention to feel good about themselves or an intention that anything other than trying to help that person get from point A to point B. So automatically right there, you're not going to get those like psychic phenomenon. You're not going to get those, uh, those points where you can feel their energy, where you know what they're thinking. You're never going to get that with an intention of taking basically your consciousness and directing it only on yourself. Then you're right. in this all your own like bubble where you're just trying to defend yourself and you're not on offense, right? So that's the first thing is intention. You got to intend, right? Then the next thing is a detachment from outcome. And this is everything Huge. in life, okay? Huge. If you're ever going to make, if you ever, if you want something so bad, the energy, I don't care what you say, you could like, you could have two people, one person is say, they're both saying the same thing. One person doesn't care whether it closes or not, but they're still intending to get the close. Uh, and then the, the other person is just really, really, really wants it, right? And, and they, but they all say the same thing. The person that's like, it could, could take it or leave it, but still kind of like, is still trying to intend for it to happen. And this is like a balancing act. That's the person that's going to get the sale because the energy is going to communicate it. So yeah. that's where subcommunication comes into play where the words you're saying are literally not even the problem. So subcommunication is something like, um, like if you know, like for example, like I'll, I'll, I can, I can detect if somebody's lying. And when somebody's yeah. lying, like their eyes will like go down, like they'll have like an eyebrow go up, like they'll, they'll, they'll talk very fast and they'll try to like, like, like make a bunch of smoke screens. And these are like sub communications that, that come up as a result of being in their own mind or, or of thinking the things or not having their emotional states handled. Yeah. So as a closer, as a anybody, because we're all in persuasion. And, yeah. we'll, and we'll debunk the whole myth of in a second here. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the negative connotation of it. The negative connotations. Yeah. Because that's the thing. And I'll go into that. But so this whole like the whole game is you've got to like have full intention to, to get the sale, but you also have to like be detached from the outcome. And that's where that, that sub communication starts to come into play. And then you have this transference back and forth ping pong match of energy, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going back and forth and back and forth. And what happens is the, the main problem is most people, you've got two ping pong players, like, barely tapping the freaking ping pong ball and it's just kind of dr dropping and they're they lose it right lip, so they have lip, no lip intention uh, they're not they're attention. not intending to project <laughs> anything right or they're projecting the wrong things right they're projecting like anger they're projecting like uh we call it covert hostility where they're like they're they're trying to like undermine get one up on somebody yeah. undermine the other person yeah yeah so what happens is once you get really, really clear headed and you get your mind in the right place, then you can start to detect all that stuff in other people. And then you start moving from communication with language to communication with more of like a psychic phenomenon, which is um, reading between the lines, not what they're saying, how they're saying it, how they're displaying it, how they're moving, uh, all of these things. And what, what happens in this gets, really weird i don't i i don't it, it does, yeah, like it i don't does. like to talk about psychic stuff but it's been happening to me so much where like i can't ignore it so the data is now making it to where i have to not ignore it if that makes yeah. sense yeah so then you start to see what's like literally i've seen what's in their own mind you right i've see seen the, like you see the matrix you start to see yeah. the matrix as it unfolds yeah uh, like same exact experience well it's remote it's called remote viewing there's um like i had this kind of like uh like I can see literally what, because they're trying to describe something and I'm seeing it and, and then I'm guessing it ahead of time. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, that thing that you said, or, or I'll say, uh, we had one guy, there was a poster he was looking at and there was a quote on it and I quoted it. And then he's like, how the hell do you know I just saw that yesterday? And, and just because that was on his mind and because I was so, I was in that zone, it just came up. So there's a lot of things beyond our own senses that a lot of people don't understand or know how to tap into yet, but we're all capable of it. 
Yeah. Once once you become a clear channel. So <laughs> this is where the conversations get a little bit crazy. We have to uh, bring it bring it back to earth for like, I mean, especially in messaging mastery, I'm sure you experienced it. You're like, there's something fucking missing here and it's not working, but this is, this is really it. And, and it's becoming a clear channel of communication because I mean, yeah, the fundamentals of the universe, we're all energy frequency communication. Like you and I are just part of the same mass of, of energy. So all of this stuff is, is besides the point, right? But um, just to circle back with that, because we covered getting into the mind and the psychic phenomenon, what I want to just kind of real quickly hash out, what does a successful game of influence look like? And not from a perspective of covert hostility, because we know that there's manipulation and influence that is framed for destruction, but ultimately what we want to teach and to facilitate for people because it is the most sustainable is creative influence and creative persuasion where it is getting what we want by helping others get what they want. In other words, fair exchange or the win, win, win um, uh, transaction, you could say. Um, so if you could just tell us a little bit about what that looks like, the successful yeah. game of influence. Well, yeah, that's kind of like, like, I don't know if there, like, I think, uh, there's an, un I can use like the inversion technique, like, uh, what's his name uses, um, Jesus, whatever. So inverse, basically the, the opposite what, of what, what a successful, not, what, not to do? <laughs> what not to do would be like influencing somebody to take an action that is not in their best interest right? That's going to hurt them or harm them. Um, get, being very responsible with the power that you actually have, right? Yeah. Once you actually realize that you can basically get anyone to do just about anything and let, as long as it, they can see a clear outcome of, of what they think they want. And that's the next key is like, what do they think they want? And then what do they actually need? Okay. Yep. And this is where like becoming, you know, you got to be like a rock of certainty. You've got to be a leader for people where this is where like confidence comes from because you have to actually have what they want, right? You have to actually be setting them, them up for like, you got to be able to project in the future what's going to happen if they continue down the path and you got to be able to redirect them and bring them to where they want to be, which is why like I've done, I've looked at a lot of like manipulation and, and, like kind of the dark psychology type of stuff. And I've seen that stuff. And um, that's always a failed game because if you're lying, if you're, there's no way around it. You can't influence somebody at like a level of like, you can't influence somebody at a level to where it's super effective, right? Where you're like, you're getting them to actually do the thing when you're lying. Because you, one, you won't be able to get yourself to do it with certainty and people follow certainty. Now you could be a sociopath and those people are easy to spot. So like there's kind of this game between you've got to, you've got to really, really, really dial in on like what your purpose is and what you got to help people do. And if you, and if it's to hurt people, then you don't have a real purpose and you really got to fucking fix your own shit. So <laughs> Um, yeah. so the point is, is like the, to answer your question, you've, it's gotta be helping somebody in some way. Like it's gotta truly be helping them. And then, then that's where like they, that, that level of intention, remember in the beginning, like when you fully, fully intend, that's where the, sh that your intention is higher than anybody else that they're going to talk to because you're literally, you're, you'll long play it. You'll slow play it. You'll, you'll tell them the things that they are they like are uncomfortable hearing because you're willing to actually say it because you fully intend for them to win. Um, and you know that this is the best damn thing this is the best damn shot they have. So once you can hit that level and that's when you'll really start to successfully close and you'll successfully get people to take the right actions. And, um, and then what happens is it starts to spread like a wildfire and, um, you start to get those raving fans. I'm sure you've seen by now because you've been all over social media, you know, <laughs> influencing, you know, successfully getting people to follow into your mission. I've had people, you know, over time, you start to realize like, wow, I've actually influenced a lot of people to do the, some really good things uh, with their life. I've had people message me saying like, well, I was about to take my own life. And no, I didn't, you know, I was on drugs and going to, you know, I was, 
back and forth between rehab and I finally got off drugs. I've had people tell me these things. And to me, that's what a successful game of influence looks like. The, the creative game. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so cool, man. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. And um, it's true. And I mean, to circle back to the dark arts and to, to really just hammer home this thing that, um, that the common belief that influence and persuasion has a negative connotation, it's it ultimately everything in the universe is neutral at its core. It's just our perspective or our, our awareness of something or our beliefs about something that determines whether it's we like it and agree or we disagree. And so to frame it um, in a different way, so it's not like a moral dilemma, because there's always going to be something that we do that there's going to have this, someone is going to consider us the villain for making that decision. And the sooner we can accept and be okay with the fact that as we grow, there's going to be more eyeballs on us and there's going to be more of a division of perspective of what's right and what's wrong in our actions and being okay with that as we pursue a purpose that is right with our core. And there are people in this world who have destructive intention. They fully intend to be the villain, right? And that is their core purpose. Some people are still going to be raving fans of them and others are going to judge them negatively. Um, I mean, six nine in the rap music in the rap industry is a great example of this. He's got a ton of raving fans and a lot of people who really dislike him. And he actually was like, I want to be the industry villain, which is funny enough. But that's one side. That's um, less of a moral judgment of of this skill set that has dark connotation um, elements of of manipulation or influence. And then the other side is having a creative intention. So the, it's really just a tool that you have at your disposal to create or destroy, but you have to be willing to, you have to be willing to hold that power in its entirety, which is creative and destructive force. Because if you are not comfortable with one side of the equation, knowing full well, like when, uh, when Einstein created the atom bomb, it had incredible creative power or that the, 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 the discovery that he made, it was a creative, power and potential but he knew at the same time that creative power at the flip of a coin had massive destructive capabilities yeah and so it's up to the, the individual who wields that power to decide do they want to use this for creation or destruction and it is entirely up to the individual and you'll always run into people who play both sides of the spectrum and so that's that's really my take on on the on on the perspective of influence being negative um and just allowing the individual to make the decision so they can use it as they wish. But if you don't master this skill, you are at the whim of others who have mastered it, which makes you more vulnerable to people with a destructive intention of influence to move you in a direction that doesn't really facilitate or fulfill your true personal objectives. And when, I mean, and the, the only thing that would be stopping anybody from, from being vulnerable from that or, 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 or protecting them from themselves from that is not having a clear state of mind clear enough to get okay with you and giving yourself permission to set an intention that is greater than the opposition and go and do something meaningful and creative with your life. And that's where, where this practice and the stuff that we're talking about is so powerful. Um, I mean, I'm, I've experienced it, you've experienced it, we see it happen all the time. And um, until the individual has a reason to rise above the opposition that they currently face, they're just going to be a victim to it. And it's that, that game will always continue. There's always going to be some opposition and we just have to choose the level that we want to play at that fulfills us. Mm. I think, yeah, I I think, think that probably debunks it. <laughs> no, uh, also, yeah, that's fire. <laughs> I think also what I think everybody here, what they need to just, everyone needs to consider is the existence of highly, highly manipulative people and very dark, evil human beings exists, right? Like it wasn't long ago in just the timeline of humanity where millions and millions of people were killed in the Holocaust, all from the act of belief shifting, manipulation. Influence uh, marketing. Influence yeah. marketing. Propaganda. propaganda. And that's a real thing. That's a real, like the whole world and, and not to get too crazy woo woo, but the world is mental. The world is built off of the, off of the mind, the mind built all of this. And your whole life is governed by the state of mind that you have. And so what, and then it, like every superhero story, the, the more, 
the more powerful of the two will win. And I think what, what everyone needs to consider is that to the degree in which you will be good, there will be a, there will be a polar opposite bad with the, with the same level of bad. So yep. and if I'm going to forecast into the future and really, really think about where me and Bulletproof and a lot of the people that are trying to wake up humanity are going is the, the, the better we get, the, the bigger and more powerful we get, the, the opposite is also going to be true. So yep. I believe 100% that there's going to be some sinister shit popping up here in the next few years. And um, I'm prepping myself. The ops. Like, it's the opposition. The opposition. <laughs> it has to happen. It has to the, happen. Yeah, the law of polarity. I wanted to just touch base there for anyone who's listening and they want to dive deeper into this principle. It's called the law of heuristic escalation. The, it, and which basically in short, what it states is that the imposition of an order manifests by default its opposite and equal force. So the moment that you put forward a positive intention or an intention to move forward, to close a deal, to, to accomplish a, a business objective, to create a thing is the moment that you manifest the opposition, the challenging force against you to create that polar balance. And it is ultimately without that opposition, life would be way too fucking easy. There would be no innovation. There would be no driving force for productivity. There would be no, um, there would be no elimination of redundant uh, elements. Anything that can't stand the opposition, that can't stand the balance and the order of, of, of life as it stands is eliminated. And it moves to a more efficient expression, which is where the digital marketplace comes from. That's why crypto is so popular. That's why online business is so popular. It's because it is a movement towards the path of least resistance, the path of most efficiency, right? And that happens as a result of of challenge and opposition, people setting intentions and then being forced to realize the other side. And um, so it's, it's super powerful. The, the law is called the law of heuristic escalation. Nice. Yeah, and, big, um, big, big ball of shit. Back to your like moral like obligations and is it moral to be influential and persuasive and manipulative? Is, is it moral? Well, it, mm -hmm. that's the morality is the choice, right? The morality is the choice of the individual. That's kind of like saying, you know, is, is, is like a done more morally bad or good. Well, I mean, it's up would, to the would, person. Would, you, would really. you go, would you go kill hit the baby Hitler if you knew what he was going to do on a long enough time horizon? That's, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the example. <laughs> that's the example of the moral dilemma, right? Yeah. And in, and I mean, I, I talk about this um, quite frequently is that to the extent that we have time horizons big enough with an intention that is okay with us, whether it's creative or destructive, it depends on the individual. If we are okay with what we are using our tool sets, like influence, persuasion, whatever it is to create, we will never experience the moral dilemma because we will know that what we're doing is for a higher purpose. So the example is like, would you go and kill a baby? Most people are going to say fucking no. But the moment you extrapolate it and you zoom out and say, well, what if that baby was going to be the baby that runs the Holocaust and kills millions of people? Are you still going to have the same way? All of a sudden they start entertaining the possibility of being like, you know what? It's a cost analysis. And it's fucked up to say, but that's really how the game works. Is we're going, as we get better and as we do more of what it is that, that we need to do to move in the ranks of influence, to, to rise in, in our, in our game, there's always going to be someone who manifests as an opposition, who's going to have a perception or, or a belief that what you're doing is wrong. And if your purpose, your state as an individual isn't solid enough to withstand that opposition, you will fold. That is going to be the moment in which your journey takes a hit. So that's, so this, this practice that, that Dylan's talking about and, and what we do is is really about getting to a place where you're clear and okay and centered with yourself in order to handle the opposition that is going to come by default, inevitably, and in greater and greater degrees as you grow. Because the game is about taking on more pressure, more responsibility, more accountability. And you will only rise to the, to the, to the scale and to the amount that you can shoulder and burden with acceptance. And most people never get past <laughs> graduating the moral restrictions of their parents. They're just still trying to make their parents happy. And if their parents think that what they're doing is not okay, they're just going to stay in that 
small, small circle. They'll never get to the point. Like, for example, Trump doesn't give a fuck. He's got billions of people probably who want him dead. But he's got an intention and he moves forward. It doesn't mean that he's right or wrong for whatever he's doing. He has his own mission. But some, a lot of people would not be able to take that. Consistent threats on your life. That's a lot of pressure. And this work of clearing your mental stuff, getting centered with your state, having a vital body, having a vital purpose and a mission that exceeds and extends beyond that pressure is what allows you to move through that resistance and take it on and actually enjoy the process so you can play competitively and have just have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. And think about this. Imagine if, um, imagine if the people in the 1940s when the Holocaust became a thing knew marketing, they knew copywriting, they knew sales, they were well equipped with the tools of influence. What, how, how quickly would that Holocaust be diffused? where we would have caught on to that stuff way quicker. We, they would have been like, yo, that's, you know, social proof. Like, <laughs> that's the bandwagon effect. That's <laughs> those cognitive biases that are- Well, that well we're seeing it happen now. We're seeing, that, we're seeing more of that now. That's why I think there's such an opposition to um, the restrictions and the state of affairs right now is that more people are observing how things are, are playing out from a sense that's like, this is kind of sus and this doesn't make sense. And- but there's still, there's, there's always going to be a greater force that is able to influence the masses, right? And that, that game is always shifting. So there's different levels in which the, the power players will move. And it's like, it could be within your family. That's one sphere of influence, like your parents' power dynamic or the city, the governor, prime minister, universal power, <laughs> global order, whatever the fuck it is, right? Um, and the people below are always at basically at the will of the influential the force that is above them, right? The, at the mercy of the, of the, of the, the players that are in this, the game at a higher level than them. And yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people who try and talk shit about like, Oh, this person's making these decisions, Trump this or our government, this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, you can complain <clears> about <throat> that. Or you can make a decision and say, I, realize that that's not my game and I haven't decided to play at the political level and I have no influence on this. I just need to do what I can do within my level or mm -hmm. real decide that that's a battle that you want to fight and go and be that person who makes that change because no one is coming for you. The people who are doing what they do, everyone, whether they admit it or not, is moving in their own self-interest. There is nobody who is going to wake up in the morning and dedicate themselves to realizing your 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 objectives and your goals more than you and so any person who has like be weary of the people who complain point fingers blame and shame uh about the actions of others and, and place moral criticisms on the world around them because unless they're really going to follow up and do something about it and make a difference those are the people that you want to follow and i mean we see it a lot right now it's rampant um I mean, I know, I know you see the same things I'm seeing. So it's, uh, it's craziness. So, I mean, I hope at least that the, this can inspire more people to just take ownership of what they see and what they want to intend for. Um, Cause otherwise like just let it be like, you're not going to make a difference um, if you're not going to play that game. So cool. Um, let's talk about handling objections. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do when you come let's go up? from new world order to objection handling yo it's just gonna be like this right i can't uh we gotta we gotta keep it grounded but we still we gotta talk about the big picture shit as well right yeah um yeah. but obviously because this is about the game of influence and getting what you want out of life that opposition will show up there's gonna be people who are resisting you there's gonna be um physical symptoms that, that show up there's going to be um any number in any area of your life um challenges that manifest on the path to accomplishing your goals. I want to ask you, how are you going to handle those objections? How do you recommend that people handle those obstacles? Yeah. So like I said in the beginning, full intention, like, yep. so there's, um, there's a scale of authority. And this is something I always talk about with, with objections. There's like different levels of authority and there's, or there's different levels of like, kind of like going back and forth with, uh, with getting your way. And um, I always 
in the, the highest level, the one that trumps all of them is moral authority. So to get, to get, a, uh, to get your way, the uh, people need to feel that you are morally obligated to make this sale. Like, and I've said this on calls before where like, you know, you have your objection handlers of price. There's the objection handler of, you know, but if like, <clears throat> if you believe, if you buy into their bullshit more, because that's all an objection is, is just a lot of like limiting beliefs and bullshit. It's the mind coming out. It's all of that mental gunk that we talk about. And if you, and then like you, you want to drop an atom bomb on a freaking call that like wins the war is like, I've been on calls where I'm like, look, like I feel morally fucking obligated to help you. Right. Like I'm, I'm like, for example, I was talking to a fitness guy and he, um, you know, he helps, he helps people who are, uh, who are fat, <laughs> get unfat. And so I'm like, look, just like you would be on a call with, uh, with somebody who's like 800 pounds, just way overweight. Let's just imagine for a second, you were talking to somebody like that. And, you know, they're, they're telling you that they don't have the time, that they don't, you know, that they can't find the time to go work out, <laughs> that they can't, uh, they can't find the money for this. And you know, deep down in your heart, that they're like five months away, if not three months away, if not maybe a month away from a freaking heart attack or a stroke sure. what do you tell <clears throat> god it's all good <laughs> it's all a fucking fly <laughs> it's all good ruined my ruined my objection handler I'm like what are you gonna tell that person like what are you gonna what like how would you handle that because right now i'm talking to a guy who's got like 800 pounds of are, mental are you, weight are you no no I'm, I'm, that's, that's oh, okay, the okay. way i would handle it because mm. i'm like because right now i'm talking to a guy He's kind of in the same position, except he's got about like 800 pounds of mental weight. And he's, and I can see what's going to happen if he doesn't take care of that. So like, what would you tell the guy who's 800 pounds talking to you that says he doesn't have the time to take care of this problem? Oh, well, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd feel like I'd feel horrible if like they didn't close and all they, they tell me their objection. And I'm like, well, that's how I feel. And they can't argue because you can't argue moral authority, which is why in the beginning I talked about, you have to be morally obligated to help the people that you're helping. And you have to have which, the full Which comes from having a good win. product. Yeah, which comes yeah. from believing in the product. That, <clears throat> oh, that, 100%. That's a, that's, a, that's a big piece of the puzzle. That's right? a given. <laughs> yeah, and it goes from product or just, just the experience that you are persuading for, right? Um, because we will have these conversations all day long. Like every conversation almost that we have with someone is some sort of a ne negotiation or persuasion moving along <laughs> the line. Right. And, um, but that, that piece, um, that you shared about the, about actually when that happens, when you have the moral obligation and you are speaking to the right customer or the right person, the, the right recept, the, the person, the recipient for yeah. what it is that you're communicating, and they come up with something like, oh, I don't have the time and the blah, blah, blah. It's like, you no longer give a fuck about whether or not they like you or not and how they take it. And you actually do what people call the hard sell. You're like, I'm literally not letting you off the hook. There is no other option here for you. And I would rather fucking have you hate me other than, as opposed to me not going the distance to, to try and at least my best to give you what I have because otherwise I would be morally out of my, my ethics. My ethics would be fucked up if I did not do this. Mm -hmm. It was on me to show up and to sell this to you if it's sales or to get you to do X, Y, Z because I see what is happening here. And if you don't like it, that's fine. And also just to put, put a bookmark in that, is, right. <clears throat> you that level, that energy you just shared and the energy that I just gave, that doesn't come from being money hungry. Like, it's, it cannot be the money that motivates you. Like, God damn, another commission? Like, that, you're not going to, I'm not going to go moral authority mode on somebody. Yeah, if I'm, enough. no, if, if like, Un for, unless, for, unless the moral responsibility <laughs> is to deliver this product for something that is uh, for a high, for a bigger game. Exactly. Like, like let's say you need the money to, to pay for your child's medical bills or something you know that's when yeah. people start selling hardcore it doesn't matter what the fuck they're selling but that's because the game that they're playing is no longer just a sale it's bigger than that but that's the more it's the, still the same conviction the moral and conviction. also 
<clears throat> so like, and it doesn't matter what and people could be watching this and they're like, well, I sell life insurance and, you know, or something that they feel doesn't like have a huge impact on like, you know, them yeah, as a person if, or whatever. If any, if any of you guys have products that you're selling and, and you're wondering how to apply any of these, just drop it in the comment, let us know. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah do keep, keep, keep going. But keep going, for yeah. example, like life insurance, like, um, you, you, you sell, you sell with stories. You sell with like, what's the reality of the situation? You want to go deeper. So like, I always say like, go really deep on discovery phase. Like if you're asking them, you have to ask, that's why you, it's so important to be interested, not interesting. Ask them a bunch of questions, find out what's going on with them. Why do they want this? Why were they interested? Figure out like why this is a big deal for them. And what you'll find is there's always an emotional driver for somebody to buy something or do something, something deeper that you're not getting. That's why you can't have those big daddy freaking moral authority moments at the end where you're like, you know, if they give any sort of resistance that you can use towards them because you got actual information. If you have the real information, if you've got the real reason why somebody's doing something, they can't, they, they, they can't budge. You got hooks in them, right? You got hooks in them. They can't go anywhere. You're like, well, you told me that this life insurance package is important to you because your dad who died when he was 30, like didn't have life insurance because he thought he was going to be fine. And here you are, the whole family's left with nothing. And you're telling me that like, like what are your kids going to say? What is your, what is your wife going to say? What would they say if they're, if they, if you put them in the same position that your dad did to you? And they, spicy. They, it's spicy. they can't fucking go anywhere. They can't go anywhere. So, so there needs to, you need to understand people first and then you need to give them the solution. And then, then moral authority just come oozes out of you. And then you've got them by, by the fucking balls. So the cojones, the cojones. <laughs> yeah, the cojones. dude, that was, that's fire, man. That was fire. I mean, if there, if there's a way to handle objections, I think that that's probably the best fucking way to do it. Um, and I don't always recommend doing it that way. Usually the objection handlers are like this big or usually the objections. If you do the call right or like that, like, it's just like, a, well, yeah. I don't have time. You don't want to go like, well, you told me your, you, you know, your life was depending on this. Like, you don't want to do yeah. that. You just want to be like, okay, well, how much time do you actually have? Like, where's the, you know, it's like a logistical yeah. thing. Like then handle the logistic. Don't go fucking crazy on every call. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the conviction the conviction close and the the conviction sales of those um, that's probably about like ten percent of clients like or ten percent of people that you ever encounter like most yeah. people are like just chilling either they're not fit for it or they are and they're just down already um, but it's on us to just show up in a way that um, allows people to get on board and yeah. I mean all of this like is easily solved by just being and 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 like living and and expressing your fullest intent, intention, your true intention and purpose. And it makes a lot of these sales or these influential decisions and conversations really fluid. And the friction pretty much goes away when the friction within ourselves is gone because there's no reason. There's no conflict within, so there's no conflict without. And, um, and but you're, there's still always going to be out because it's a moving game and it's, it's kind of like um, uh, – it's fluctuating. There's always going to be some moments. So that's where the, this stuff really comes into play. So you can continue going and, and not be sidetracked. Right. <laughs> cool, man. So, I mean, that was banger. And I, I, we're pretty much just right on time. Um, the last thing that I, um, I wanted to ask is just now with all of that in mind, is how do you, what do you do now to help people overcome all of this? What do we do now? So, okay. <laughs> Strap for seatbelts, boys and girls. Yeah. So cool. what we do is we call it our mental clearing system. Yeah. Okay. We help entrepreneurs doing six, seven, eight, and we just enrolled our first nine figure client. All right. This is all shapes and sizes, whether you're a billionaire, whether you are a uh, just starting out. Um, most everyone's got mental hurdles. Everyone does. There's nobody that's just like, oh, I was born mentally good. Like, okay, well. <laughs> you know, I, until, you, until you got out into the world <laughs> yeah <laughs> until you got out into the world and got your ass kicked well yeah. so we help because we're trying to make the biggest ripple effect possible we want to we want to influence and, and connect with the, the most amount of people possible and we do that because you know we want to help the people that have the most impact on other people which is business owners mm -hmm. so if you're a business owner you're an entrepreneur you're somebody who's even if you're not like 
you know, we can we can still try to help you out, but mostly, you know, this is geared towards people who are trying to change the world and have that intention. So our mental clearing system, we remove self-doubt, frustration, fear and anxiety, grief and loss. We have a we have a software where we're the only measurable, trackable mindset program in the world. We measure out something called units of charge. Charge yeah. mental keep, keep charge. Going. I, I got my which thing. is, for example, if you are feeling guilt or if you're feeling grief, you're feeling this heaviness. <laughs> and he's he's a he's cleared five hundred plus units of mental charge, which is what that award is. So about, we've got I'm get, guilt. I'm about to get my Gino too. Oh shit, thousand. Damn. Yeah, and and it Gino weighs too. heavy. And if you've ever felt it weigh heavy, well, the reason why it weighs heavy is because it's real atomic mass. It's a real physical mass that our Dude. mind creates. And the reason why medications and the whole fucking pharmaceutical industry, therapy, all of this hasn't worked is because they're trying to study and help the mind with chemicals. The mind is not a chemical phenomenon. It's not a liquid or a gas. It's a fucking, it's the mind. It's, it's, it's what no, creates it's, all of it. It's, it's particle, particle physics, it's electrical mass. Yeah. Perceptions and, and perspectives. And what we help is we, we offset those perspectives to where if you only associate negative, if you ever met somebody who's all negative, they only see the world in negative. It's their lens that they've seen the world with. What we do is we start to show more of the positives. We bring it back to a balanced state. Then that, what that does as a result, is it gets you more, it gets you more unreactive, like you're less reactive to the world. You're not leaning on the world for happiness and guidance and, and, and feeling good and all of these emotions. You're actually more poised and you're more in control of your life. And we've done this with over 220 entrepreneurs at this point. That's led to a 78% increase in income. We've almost doubled their income. This has led to a 47% uh, decrease in fear. And this is like an 87%. Which is, which, is, which is anxiety, which all of the social anxiety, all of this jitteriness and all yeah. this, this, the bullshit that people are experiencing right now is all a symptom and a feedback of the mind. You yeah. don't need medication for it. The same thing with depression. Um, uh, I'll just, you'll continue in a sec. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to jump in. These are all common, current, trending problems that have been labeled as medicinal issues, chemical imbalances that can be solved entirely through the mind. It is all perspective. It is rebalancing. The chemical state of the body is a side effect of the state of the mind. Yeah. The moment you see something scary, adrenaline floods your body. Your chemical balance has literally been changed in the instant by perception. This is why this shit is so important. This is why we talk about this the way that we do. And Marco said here, matter it is exactly right. The moment the mind splits, positive and negative perception is where there's a matter is mass actually exists in the mind and the body. And that's why we say things that matter. What's the matter? What is the perception positive or negative that has happened in your mind? Why do you have baggage, which is weight? It is a physical weight and sensation. If you've ever had the experience of like being worried and then you go and um, see a family member or a friend that you thought was maybe like at risk or something. And then in the instant of perceiving them being safe, you no longer have that burden of that weight and it has been lifted and you can breathe and your chest opens up and you're light and you no longer feel stressed. It is because of mental perceptions. That is the, the, the experience of that release of tension is what this is about. And that's why we call clearing charges, clearing particles, clearing the physical atomic matter that exists within the mind and the body that burdens people down and weighs them down from rising in the ranks of influence and playing a bigger game. Yeah. Nailed so, it. Uh, Nailed so it. I'll, I'll let you continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so all of that, yes, that's that's what we do. We've done it. We have a software we built out where we actually go through a mental clearing sessions that actually dissipate and and break up that particles of matter that causes that weight. And over the over the course of ninety days, like uh, Seb has the award of clearing five hundred units plus of, of this matter of this mental charge and getting to a place where uh, i mean well you're a testimonial what happened with you yeah what getting here pretty much i do the process almost every single day i mean i'll wow. do, i'll go through stints now where where like i'll just clear a bunch of shit and then like i'll be good to go for a while i'm unreactive i got my shit everything that i'm doing now is pretty much a byproduct of this work i was still living at my mom's house when i paid for the program on credit card to get out of my social anxiety, I was fucking tripping out. I was depressed, anxious, 
frustrated, angry, all these things. I didn't know what the fuck was going on, but it was the moment that I was like, I realized that this was a problem and I didn't believe that the traditional medical system and the ways of handling things, talk therapy, all these things circling around the problems. I didn't believe that that was a solution. I believed at my core that there was something more that I was here to do, to experience, to express and to, to, to give to the world. And I wasn't able to do it battling my mind. And it was the moment that I was able to rise above that, that I no longer had these issues. And look at where I live. Like, I got all kinds of shit going on. I have, like, tons of uncertainty. I'm taking risks on a daily basis to, to move the needle of my business and to help as many people as I can. And it's the most fun I've ever had. Like, I can't wait. Like, worst case scenario, I'll fucking die. Like, whatever. Handled it in the tool already. Like, I'm, like, all right, bet. You know what I mean? Fuck I got better, I got better <laughs> shit to worry about. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But, and that's so, the energy that you get after doing this stuff is you're just like, fucking bring it, bring it yeah. on. Like I'm, I'm Seriously. open to experience everything. And that's where, um, that's where a lot of good shit happens in life and life gets way better because if we're in mental state, that's why, I mean, we have seven, eight figure earners in our program and, that and brought their disclose, mind with them. They got this financial success, yeah, time and success. a million in 90 days. That yeah. money wouldn't that money wouldn't have been spent if this shit doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't have closed fucking what did we do? One point three million dollars in a year if this shit didn't work and we haven't had a single refund. That's a that's a huge testimony, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so that's huge, bro. This is this is this is the this is God's work. This is the real shit. This is the shit that everybody on earth needs to be doing. So if you want to know more about it. Shoot me a DM under Dylan Giggs Influence, and uh, that's my name right there. So I don't even need to do it. So um, yeah, make make sure you tune in with that. Just just hit Dylan. I'll up. be revamping yeah. my Instagram here soon. I have to, I have to, I have to make a couple changes, and then I'm gonna be on here going live and being yeah. cool. So <laughs> Dylan, Dylan's busy harvesting on Facebook. These guys have a, an insane business model. It just uh, the way that you guys are running shop is um, it's just so inspiring, man. And I'm I'm so grateful to be part of the community. Um, I truly wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that I do now if it wasn't for this. And um, the the tool and the process has now been a staple in my life. Um, it's just a practice. Okay, I'm awesome. gonna be doing. Yeah, I'm going to be doing it That's for the awesome. rest of my life, for sure. Fuck yeah, dude. Dude, we're glad to have you, and I appreciate you having me on here. Yeah, man. More to, more to come. I can't wait. And um, that's that's just about it. That's an hour. So I hope you guys enjoyed the the live. Um, if you guys have any questions, we have a couple minutes um, where we can answer some Q and A's. If you want to just drop them in the chat. Oh, man. Um, and um, and if not, otherwise we'll wrap it up. And that's uh, that's session one. That was Dylan, fun. Dylan G. Yeah, it was fucking fun, was, man. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. <laughs> Big baller shit, man. It's, Thanks um, for tuning in, guys. Yeah, yo, questions, anyone, is anyone still here? Did we, did we put everyone to sleep? What's going on? Drop the comments, drop the comments, that is what's popping. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Do I have questions? Yeah. How are you doing, bro? How's I'm your good. Yeah? Feeling good. I got some so charges good. to clear here soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, I, I was just doing one yesterday, like. So, uh, yeah. I got a fear, I got a fear charge to clear because, uh, John, John and I just uh, between you and I, it looks like we're doing a, a like a an in person event, like where I'm gonna be public oh, yeah. speaking. So, so never never did public speaking offline, so I'm uh, a little nerve wracking, but it's gonna be fun. Fantastic, yeah. Well, I mean, there, you're um, you're not limited in the tools that you need to move through that, and you had a brilliant mentor um, uh, out of John and yep. Um, and we'll we'll keep it up. I I can't wait to have you back on here, and um, we'll uh, we'll tune in and. The next little bit so it looks like we don't have any questions so that's all good and uh peace bro peace out player peace. you too